Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hey guys, this is Liz Candace. This is Nikki Collin. What up, guys? This is Essence Carson. Hey, this is Imani Media Stafford. Hey, this is Jordan Canada. This is Asia Wilson. Welcome to the WNBA Nation. What's up, everybody? How we doing tonight? What's up? <laughs> um, Jason and Logan joining me tonight on the stream. We're just going to have a nice, relaxing, you know, uh, just kind of a chill stream tonight. Wanting to hang out. Um, we've been chatting um, about doing some season modes through 2K and having some fun with that. And uh, and so we'll be probably bringing you some of that content here soon. We want to finish. We'll probably at least do one or two seasons, uh, two season playthroughs um, with WNBA uh, teams on the new NBA 2K21 um, and getting some content out that way. But we just want to hang out tonight. We just want to have just a chill conversation. Whoever wants to hop on, we can just do some Q&A. Um, we can talk about some of the news that's been going on in NCAA uh, ball as well as uh, some news regarding some WNBA players right now. But uh, Logan, how have you been, dude? Looking good in I'm that not, orange hoodie. Yeah, I'm doing good. Uh, I'm finding out these headphones fit a lot better with a hat on. So uh, <laughs> I'm glad that today is a hat day and I learned that bit of information. I'm doing a lot better than my water bottle, uh, which I managed to... I have one of those like electric recliners. Like you press the button on the side and it like retracts everything. Yeah. And, and I spent about 10 minutes earlier tonight trying to figure out why it sounded so horrible when I was trying to put the footrest back down and found out that I had actually just been crushing a water bottle under it the whole time and <laughs> spilling, I spilled water all underneath my couch. Nice. Um, nice. So I, you know, 10 minutes before we were jumping on the broadcast, I was down with a rag, just trying not to ruin someone else's house. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, let's pretend like none of that happened, but that's what I've been up to for the, trying to, for the evening. <laughs> trying to get out of that. I love it, dude. Um, Jason, how you been, man? I've been good. Um, I, I went to, for my first workout of the new year. Ooh, uh, how'd that go? And, oh, terribly. I, the holidays were not good to me. I haven't exercised in like three weeks. So it, it was what it was. And in a couple of weeks, I'll be back to my normal self. But I, I had more pie and especially like stuffed enchiladas. Like they just, they killed me this, this break. So stuffed enchiladas. I yeah. suppose so. Like, what's a stuffed enchilada versus a regular enchilada? I, I guess. Uh, okay, so a regular enchilada to me is usually beans, meat covered in like a red sauce and uh-huh. baked. Okay, but like my mother in law does them with like cream cheese and chilies. Like, there's just a whole bunch of crap in there that I'm not used to being in there. Okay, and so like I called it stuffed. It's not really stuffed, but it's just like it's much less healthy than I'm used to. And <laughs> I'm not really used to enchiladas being healthy, but this is a significantly step down in health. So, okay. <laughs> nice. You don't. So, yeah, I, I, so, so you're I, saying your, your first workout went rough. Yeah, I'm in terrible shape, but like I said, it'll get better. And I had a really great holiday. We spent a lot of time with uh family out in Utah. Saw you guys, we, we had a little, uh, uh, meet together, whatever you want to call that. A meet um, together yeah, among was, the meats. A meet together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, w- we went to, a, I think they're called a Rodigio grill or Rodigio grill, something Rodigio like that. Rodigio grill. Uh, yeah. Rodigio. Yeah. Basically, it's a, if you, if you've not experienced this, it's basically you have a little toggle on your table. And if you put the green side up, they just bring you meat. And we sat there for what, like two and a half hours, two and a half hours yeah. where they just kept bringing over slices of meat <laughs> to us. Um, yeah. I, I had to burn some of that off tonight and it, it didn't want to leave. So mm-hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to give a special shout out to our waitress page who did oh, yes. way better. She did way better than the guy before her. Cause she started to figure out like that thing's staying on green. So you can just, <laughs> you can just keep on keeping but on. I, I feel like the first dude was like, Oh, well I'm not going to give him a ton, but I think Paige figured out that, once she started feeding us more, that's how we were going to eventually leave the table, right? <laughs> yeah. If she started yeah, p- putting out some bigger portions, then all of a sudden it was going to become, it was going to start to get real and we would have to like own up to our decision to be there. So I thought that was, yeah. that was positive. 
It was a great experience. Mm. Dude, it was so good. It's always good to hang out as a show, you know, actually in person. Um, hanging mm-hmm. out in person has been such like a rare occasion, uh, you know, since last March that getting to hang out, you know, specifically with you guys was really cool. Um, you know, Jason having you in Utah for a weekend and, or, you know, a week or so, whatever it was. And then, you know, making that work with Logan and Steve and my schedules to all get together. That was a blast, man. That was so much fun. Yeah. I had a good time. Jason, I got to ask, were, were you at a, were you in like, do you have a home gym set up or, or do you have a, a public gym? No. So I actually, um, me and my son joined a uh, Taekwondo Dojang, but I get to go work out there as well. They have some equipment and stuff. So, um, that, that's where I work out now is at my nice. Dojang. Yeah. I, so, I'm essentially course. Dwight from the office. <laughs> Seriously. Cause I, I was going to say, I love, uh, I, I have a gym here in like the little town in which I live that there are probably like three or four other regulars at about the time in the evening where I go. And mm-hmm. we've never spoken a word to one another, but we all like, we've got our headphones in and especially during like the holidays, we all gave each other like the good for you. Like, like good you to know, see you. it's, it's the holidays. It's not fun to be here right now, <laughs> but. But we all like I, I'm not social at the gym. I don't go out and talk to people. But there's always new people in January that you see there. And I silently root for them. I'm like, I hope like January 25th <laughs> that I come in and it's like that dude's, you know, he's still, he's still getting it because that's like that, you know, just it's like the one part of me that is like a good person. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I really root for other people. Like I want to be in March and just be like, man, that guy is shredded now. Like. He's and then I want to, I want to feel bad about how bad I'm doing because someone else is doing so good in like the three months that <laughs> they're sticking to the resolution. I, I, I'm glad you're such a positive person. I'm like the exact opposite. I like, and I, I don't really go to a gym where you have kind of the New Year's rush anymore. But uh, when that was the case, like I'd go in and I'd like look at like the 40 faces I didn't recognize because I, I was like 24 hour fitness was the last gym I was a member of, which it was just packed. Mm-hmm. And so you get all those New Year's resolution people, and I'd be like, I'd try to pick out. I'm like, which two of you are still going to be here in February? Like, <laughs> like I I'd, I'd like start playing the guessing game, and I I'd see like somebody like on an exercise ball texting, and I'm like, you're gone, you're not going to make it. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're texting lady on there. exercise ball, you're done. Texting lady. <laughs> oh, dude, I love it. Well, guys, uh, we had a blast getting to hang out together in real life. Now we're getting to hang out a little bit together tonight. <laughs> Um, we've got a, a few things I want to cover, but the first thing I got to hop on is just, dude, Renee Montgomery dropping some hot news today. Uh, yeah. She is now a partial owner of a professional football team, along with one very, what I would, who I would consider the truly most interesting man in the world, Marshawn Lynch, beast mode. Um, like, of course, beast mode owns like, a professional football team because <laughs> why not? But Renee Montgomery hopping in on that action, I think is awesome. And I just wanted to know, Jason, let's start with you. What was your first reaction to, uh, to seeing that news come across Twitter earlier tonight? Um, I, I was stoked. I, I've often thought that one of the things that might actually get us, get the W some more recognition is getting people's, uh, getting players personalities out there. Uh, a lot of players that we talk to on the phone, and they don't even necessarily say this in interviews. It's usually like before or after the interview when we're talking to them. They talk about the importance of building a personal brand. And you don't see as much of that in the WNBA. I mean, like Marshawn Lynch, he has a personal brand. And so Renee Montgomery getting out there, getting into a field where, you know, this kind of minor league football, you're going to have a lot of people that don't normally watch the W. And as they get to know her and care about her, then that can bring people over to the league. So I, I think it's really good in building that brand. Um, and also I had no idea that an FFL or whatever it is, FLF, um, I, I had no idea it was coming. So I'm kind of stoked about that. But, uh, really for me, it was, it was seeing Renee Montgomery get out there and starting to establish kind of a brand for herself. I, I think that's great. I liked it. No, I think that's really solid because I think you're right about how Marshawn Lynch is his own brand and Renee Montgomery being able to hop in and, you know, kind of partner with somebody like that and yeah. have bring mm-hmm. her own clout that she has into, um, you know, into everything I think is really cool. And then being able to yeah. hopefully, 
you know, have the involvement that she does and get some more, yeah, some more of those connections, just like you said, Jason, getting some of those connections with, you know, other athletes, fans, what have you, and getting them introduced to a WNBA player. So, uh, Logan, mm-hmm. I know you've got a lot of, uh, you got a lot of love for for beast mode, so I want to hear uh, what was your what was your thoughts on this. My my love for Marshawn Lynch is boundless. First of all, <laughs> uh, it cannot be contained. Um, yeah, he's one of my favorite athletes uh, all time, and he does he's he's one of the best out there at not just establishing the personal brand based on like good marketing tactics, but just having the personality for it um, right. and mm-hmm. just being like kind of drawing people to him. And uh, something I really enjoyed, I- I'm going to take a step back here a little bit. Something I really enjoyed about the the WNBA bubble and the NBA playoff bubble happening, happening concurrently this year is it sort of established that women's basketball players deserve a seat at that table with Agreed. like the, the club mm-hmm. of other personalities that you kind of see, you know, pe- people really like following celebrities, but like the way that we can follow athletes via like Twitter and stuff like that now like it's kind of becoming more a game of like, I obviously I root for my team, but I also root for like these people and I follow like the arc of their careers. And for, for a long time we've known like basketball has succeeded at that. Like the NBA crushes it with marketing their player. Baseball is not so good. Um, hockey doesn't care. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like <laughs> hockey is kind of at that table, but like they never accept the invite. They're just like, you know, there's like four players you can name and they're all fine with that. But seeing <laughs> seeing Renee Montgomery, like like hopefully there's like some appearances where she's palling around with Marshawn Lynch and they're on TV shows and like promoting the you know this league. It sounds really interesting. It's probably I, I think it's one of those leagues where like fans can like vote in on like some of the play calls oh, and yeah, be yeah, really yeah. involved. Um, and yeah. and what you know is is this like little seven on seven football league going to last a long time? The the history says no. I was gonna um, say, yeah, but <laughs> but that's not really what's important. How long did the, the XFL is... talk about bad timing with the XFL? <laughs> yeah. Like they, yeah, just poured in like millions and millions of dollars, and then literally, like just as it's about to start, it's like huh, pandemic, right? Like the world shuts yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I I think the important thing is to to see, you know, when 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 uh, big names like LeBron James or I know Richard Sherman holds a, a celebrity softball game every year and like Kobe Bryant was there, like big, big names were there. Right. I want to see, you know, Renee Montgomery and Diamond to Shields and, you know, get Diana Taurasi out there and like Super will show up. And like the more that they sh- kind of show up in the, in the public eye as like, like, you know, the sports center commercials where they're like this sports center and it's like, they're right. always in uniform. I think people like having that image of athletes and like the more that they can show up and just be like, I'm Bree Stewart and I'm on like good morning America and I'm on PTI mm-hmm. for a minute. And then I go out and ball and win championships. I think the more you get that from women's basketball players, the more it's just kind of kind of be a natural, you know, the, the divide that people have mentally between men's basketball, and women's basketball is going to kind of erode the, the more that we see, you know, female personalities just kind of, and and almost treat it like it's normal, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> instead of being like, oh, that's that's cool that like Maya Moore is, you know, doing something with with LeBron James. It's just like no, like you know, it's not weird that Damian Lillard wears a a goat Diana Taurasi t shirt. Like it's all hoops. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's basketball. Not, you know. So I just this is another you know little little just another addition to the, the latest chapter that we're working on, which is just treating female athletes like athletes. No, oh, for sure. For sure, I think yeah. that's a good thing. I love it. Um, I thought it was, yeah, I'm excited about it. Anytime, anytime Marshawn Lynch has a connection to the WNBA, I'm going to obviously be <laughs> stoked about that. Um, but I think that, uh, I think Renee Montgomery is, is just one of the more likable people in, mm-hmm. uh, in all of yeah. sports. And Marshawn Lynch is one of the more likable people in all of sports. So I just can't imagine, like, like, I feel like I'm definitely going to be following this team now. And like really yeah. like I might get like somewhat invested into into uh you know some some non NFL football so we'll have to see how that all that plays out but uh hey want to give a shout out to everybody we're seeing several of you hopping on and and following us or uh joining us on our chat on our live stream tonight seeing a few familiar names popping in there 
Um, if you haven't had a chance yet to hit that follow uh, button down below, we'd appreciate that. Our most recent follower, Notre Dame Irish MV, um, actually followed us, and and we really appreciate that. Uh, followed us off uh, while we weren't streaming, so want to give them a shout out right now. Um, and uh, so yeah, we're ex- we're excited about that. Um, know that they're around, and so really appreciate the follow there. Feel free to hop in, guys. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. Hop in the chat and and send us a, a quick message over there. Let us know like where you're watching from. Are you uh, are you in South Bend? Are you in uh, Nashville? Are you in LA? Where are we at? So. Oh, there we go. We got uh, another name, Irish MV from New Hampshire. Oh, all right. Sweet. That yeah. wouldn't have been my first guess. Yeah, I was not anticipating <laughs> New Hampshire. For Northern the- Indiana, Southern Michigan, yeah, New Hampshire. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> but New Hampshire. That's all, all right. good. Irish fans be everywhere. <laughs> Seriously, though, they're, that's, it's, they are one of those teams that's kind of like a nationwide. Uh, yeah, they're a national brand for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, they're they're what BYU fans think they are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> there would be what you fans will want to be or say they are but aren't. Um but uh yeah, shout out, appreciate the follow. Anybody else who's watching right now and you haven't followed, uh go ahead and and smack that button. As soon as we hit hit 50 followers, we can start um monetizing and bringing in some uh a little bit of extra cash there so that we can start continue to improve the quality of our show, the quality of our streams. Um, the quality of our overall coverage of women's hoops. Um, and so, uh, yeah, just want to appreciate you guys all hopping in there. Uh, Jason and Logan, I want to turn a little bit of time over to you guys to discuss what you've got coming up as far as not basketball, but hockey. What's, uh, what's on the radar? Kind of drop some news here to everybody who's watching right now. Yeah. So we. Uh, obviously, uh, we've had this podcast for what, like four or five years now. Um, uh, a couple years ago, we branched out and we've been covering the NWSL. Specifically, Steve has done a ton of work on that. That's kind of his baby. Um, and so we're, we're figuring it's time to branch out again, cover another women's league. So we're going to start covering the NWHL. Uh, Twitter channels already started for that. Um, and what we're going to be doing is, uh, kind of a, a lot of episodes or, or a, a good chunk of episodes real quick. Cause, it's January, I want to say 23rd, 25th, somewhere around there. I should have had the dates pulled up. Uh, but end of January, they begin a two-week season, like super fast. There's going to be, I think it's like three to five games every single day over yeah. a two-week period. It's wild. Um, so there's going to be a, a ton of hockey really fast. They're doing a bubble season, uh, just like a lot of leagues have. Um, and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing an episode beforehand, probably an episode during week one, an episode during week two. And then as as the playoffs come at the end of week two, obviously, we'll we'll have some episodes with that. So... Um, we're excited to get that started though. So if you like hockey or even if you don't like hockey, but you want to like hockey or you don't like hockey, but you want to support women, uh, female athletes, uh, this is a great way to do that. So, uh, Twitter handle is at NWHL nation, uh, underscore pod. No, no, not underscore pod. NWHL nation pod. Sorry. We used to have an underscore in one of our old, old shows and, uh, <laughs> I've never been able to, to get rid of it get in my mind. Out. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, at NWHL Nation Pod uh, is on Twitter. Uh, the Twitch live streams when we record episodes will probably be coming through this channel, uh, which I guess we can talk a little bit about that too. Um, the way this channel is going to run from from kind of this point on is about once a week, we're going to record a regular episode, the thing that you would normally hear in your podcast feed. And then we're also going to have what we're calling uh, W Extra. Uh, right. Names in workshop, but we, we we like that one so far. Um, and the idea being that it's extra content. It's not necessarily a podcast episode. It's something like tonight where we can talk back and forth. We can do a question and answer. Uh, we could throw out some, some other league content, some NWHL content, content, some NWSL content. Um, but yeah, so, uh, you can come here for the live recording of episodes. Uh, the, it'll have its own podcast feed. So we'll be getting links out to that soon. Uh, we'll probably do a little bit of like a cross promotion where we do like a, you know, a teaser, a little season preview, like a five, 10 minute season preview that we run on our podcast feed. So, uh, you'll be hearing a lot more of that in a few weeks to come. Um, I've started putting together, uh, prep sheets. I'm, I'm going through and, and doing a bunch of research on each of these teams. So Logan and I can get caught up because he's going to kind of run that ship with me. But I don't know. Logan, do you have any thoughts? Anything I missed about what we're going to be doing there? Uh, nothing about what we're going to be doing. Just, uh, if, if you have suggestions for which team I need to be a fan of, I haven't decided yet and I've only got about three weeks. So, uh, weigh in 
If <laughs> if you got, I, I can't go by geography. There's nobody nearby that like just makes sense. <laughs> so it's going to be pure instinctual. Uh, it's just going to be based on, I mean, I can't just go by logo either because like almost all of them are incredible. I was going to say yeah. the NWTL <laughs> has phenomenal, not just team names, but logos and like sweaters. Like it, oh, yeah. it's phenomenal. Like the, the uniforms that technically in hockey, it's called a sweater. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but yeah, they've got just uh, check out the Riveters home unis. I'm just saying like, go, no, is it, wait, go, is it the home go, ones or the away, away ones? unis? The yeah, away don't unis. look at the home ones. Yeah. Excuse don't me. Look at the home the ones. away unis are <laughs> slick. Don't just even boys. look at them. <laughs> <laughs> just, per, just pretend they don't exist. Buffalo Buttes uh, are exciting. And then, you know, Logan, you're new to the league and so are the Toronto Six. That's always an option. It's always an in, option. In, I, I, I really am excited to get this podcast started because I want to get someone on from Toronto Six and find out where the name comes from. Because it's like to be a number is a super unique take. And I feel like there's got to be meaning behind it. Mm-hmm. And I, I haven't been able to find out why. Like I've been trying to find out why they're called the Toronto Six. And I mean, I, I just I don't know. <laughs> like I, I, there's, I guess the 49ers, at least there's the connection to the gold rush and like, it kind of right. makes sense. Like just to, yeah, the just 76ers, to straight up be a number. 76ers yeah. make sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm curious to, to get the, the download on that, but yeah, uh, join us for that though. It's going to be a fun adventure. Uh, this will be our first time taking on hockey content. So, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you enjoy what we do for the WNBA, uh, come help us do it for the NWSL, uh, subscribe to the podcast, give us some downloads. Uh, help us get this thing off the ground. That'd be great. Um, dude, I, I'm really excited to hear I, when Mike and Steve launched their NWSL show, that was a lot of fun because it was an opportunity to like get to know a whole new league. Um, and while I haven't been obviously as into that league as I have with the W, um, it's been Really cool to be able to to follow along a lot of those storylines and with a lot of those teams. And I'm really excited about um the NWHL as well. I think that um I think that, you know, a six team short season, anybody who has gotten involved with uh something that if any of you have had a chance to check something out on on YouTube, uh it's not called the Marble Olympics anymore, but it used to be the Marble Olympics. What's it? Marble now? League. Marble League. Marble yeah. League. It's sick. Like I never thought in a million years I would actually get attached to like colored marbles, to a marble. <laughs> but I totally have. And like I've, I've kept tabs on that. We started watching that as hosts. We kind of found that pretty early on before. Yeah, a um, few years ago, he he blew up this last year with like quarantine. Everybody was like, "Well, what sports are out there?" And somebody and, like he just caught, uh, you know, Gels Marble Runs just just caught fire and and really went gangbusters and and got a ton of uh popularity everybody was hanging out um watching that and enjoying that from home um you know because it was a safe way to enjoy you know competition where other sports weren't playing um and so i'm excited because those are that was those are kind of like short you know things like that a short season like this with six teams is a perfect way to get me into a league and just give me like a good taste so that I'm really excited about it moving forward. So although I w- wish we were having a full season, I'm super down for what they're yeah. they're doing in a bubble scenario. Yeah, and uh, some big news on the hockey side, uh, in case anybody wants to know. Uh, so one of the main things that women's sports have had trouble with is getting on network television. Right. Uh, we, we've obviously had that fight with the WNBA. And so they went an interesting route last year, contract with Twitch. Uh, and they streamed all their games live on Twitch, which they're doing that for a good chunk of their games. But uh, they're going to have a few games, specifically their playoff games. And I think a few other of their kind of regular season during that first week and a half um, are actually going to be on NBC Sports Network. So they've actually got onto cable TV. Uh, I believe this is the first time the NWHL has got a cable TV contract. So uh, big news there uh, showing kind of the growth of the league. And uh, yeah, so uh, we'll be... If you follow us on Twitter, at NWHL Nation Pod, uh, we'll be posting out when those are on. Uh, make sure to watch it because, you know, whatever we can do to get their ratings up, which I don't even know how ratings work on TV anymore, if they spy on you through your webcam or what. But uh, <laughs> whatever you can do to get their ratings up, uh, we want to do that because we want, you know, NBC to look at those numbers and go, oh, there's a market for this and, and to push that more. So 
Uh, we'll be we'll be tweeting that out, trying to rally you guys, get you get you on the TV watching, and quite frankly, watching great hockey. I mean, I watched a lot of last season. It's it's really great, phenomenal hockey, um, and uh, yeah, it it it's going to be a blast. I'm excited about it. Absolutely, Logan. Who uh, I, I I'm just curious uh, from you. How much did the the Olympic hockey final, uh, the previous Olympic hockey final, how much has that like played on your mind as far as getting into women's hockey? A a ton. So, (laughs) so that, that final was one of those, like, I remember where I was when I watched it, I watched it from start to finish. It was, I I can't throw together a list right now quickly in my head, but at, at worst, it's like a top five, like sports event that I've watched. Um, Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. uh, There's like a handful of other things that come instantly to mind that I just think like, Oh, those are like extraordinary events, but especially in terms of uh, Olympic sports, I I think that and like the Phelps winning eight medals year and some, some like U S versus China gymnastics. Like those are my, like a lifetime's Mm -hmm. worth of Olympic highlights. It's right up there. It was an incredible game and an incredible finish. It actually kind of opens the door to what I imagine Jason and I will will discuss quite a bit in this new podcast as well. Um, I originally I was just going to be a fan of whichever team Hillary Knight was on, um, <laughs> and and I did a lot of research into um, the organization that she's now part of. The I believe it's the PWHPA, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. which is the group of hockey players that are on strike because of uh, the Canadian Women's Hockey League folding and um, conditions and things that they weren't happy about with existing leagues in North America. Um, and a lot of it has to do with how they're paid. Um, I think between the, the Olympic gold medal win and also uh, the, the U S women's soccer team uh, world cup win, there's kind of been this harsh, but necessary light shined on how poorly women's athletes were being treated in relation to their, their male peers. Um, yeah. And and it's been a big story in soccer to the point where the men's soccer team is even like, yeah, this is stupid. You should totally be paying them. Um, <laughs> but in <laughs> hockey, it just because, uh, hockey's popularity is, is kind of fourth, uh, in line behind the, the big three in North America. Right. Um, I don't know if it's gotten as much attention, but there is, uh, kind of this ongoing kind of B plot to women's hockey in America, which is that a lot of really good, really popular players, um, aren't happy with, uh, the current plan to kind of elevate them into a really serious professional league. Um, and that's definitely, that's worth exploring. The uh, the Lamoureux sisters are actually supposed to have a book coming out next month, um, oh. all about it, which I'm I'm pretty excited about. That'd yeah, be sweet. Yeah, no, and I I mean a lot of it comes down to I mean I was looking into it. I think the average salary of an NWHL player is about twenty grand, uh, which obviously you don't live off that, especially if your team's in downtown Manhattan. <laughs> I mean, there's no way you're living off of 20 grand. So, yeah. you know, they're working two jobs. They're, you know, they've got something, you know, they've got their side hustle, whatever it is that, that enables them to continue to play. Um, and obviously there's ways to fix that. I mean, the WNBA model is one of those where rather than the NWHL kind of being an independent functioning operation, uh, have the NHL take it under its wing and invest in the league, um, allowing them to, to increase pay and allowing them to increase exposure and stuff like that. And, giving them some some background stuff. I mean, if you watched the games last season, um, I mean, the quality of the broadcast was good, but it was roughly what we could do. Like, if we had a decent camera and, like, the software we used to broadcast, that's about what the quality of the, the broadcast was. It was an HD broadcast over Twitch with two people talking into a mic, and then they kind of just shuffle, shuffle the thing back and forth. Uh, not Not as many graphics as you'd expect from a professional sports league. Uh, right. A lot of those things were lacking. And so... Um, you know, if you could get some of the the structure that the NHL has, some of the you know the equipment and the the technology teams and all that stuff, um, you know, it could be a big boost to the league. So that's one model. Um, another model is to get people that are wealthy that are willing to invest in it uh, to buy teams. But yeah, the the model they have right now, I mean, we've you we've can't been trying. Case- We've, yeah. we've been trying to get there. <laughs> yeah, that's Kyle. I, I have it on good authority that Kyle and his wife were recently discussing wealth, uh, <laughs> in, in pursuit of, they're, they're trying to, they're trying to raise the profile of the league on their own. So, <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's, I wish, man. I wish we had that kind of money. <laughs> so, so, someday Kyle's just gonna, to own, Kyle's just gonna own a WNBA team and I we'll just be, be like, hey, Kyle, <laughs> can if, we get box seats? Come on, if man. I ever uh, accumulated uh, wealth. 
that would be on my <laughs> that would be on my list. Um, but I I want to give a quick well, you, shout. I, oh, go ahead. Uh, well, I, I was just gonna say really quick. You know, uh, I I don't want to preview too soon. I'm sure we'll do this at the end of the episode. But we've we've kind of got a roadmap for what we're going to be doing for you listeners uh, the rest of January. Yes. Um, and we we will be at some point uh, discussing how monumental the the WMBA's new CBA agreement. Um, was in this past year. Yeah. And, and looking at all this hockey stuff has made me realize, like, we always talk about how the WNBA is still kind of in its infancy as a league compared to like a hundred years of baseball and 80 years of basketball. Mm -hmm. Um, but that CBA is such like an incredible, like, like they're trying to win players over from the European leagues where they're making lots of money. And, and the WNBA is making these big strides to really like get there. And, you know, women, women's hockey is going to need that at some point, but they're not there yet. They're, they're even earlier yeah. in, in kind of that process. Absolutely. Yeah. They're on, they're on year, I think five or six. I mean, they're just a brand new baby league. Uh, they started out with four teams. They're now at six teams. I mean, uh, slowly growing and the sixth team, the Toronto six, that was an acquisition from the folding of the Canadian league. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's as infant as a league gets. So. Um, hey, before we transition, I got to give a quick shout out. I'm going to, I have to like step off from my headphones for just a sec. I got to grab something back here. I got to brag uh, about a gift that Logan and myself and actually Steve also received. I'm going to just show this real quick. Y'all get to see that I'm wearing like sweatpants. Because that's the best way to record <laughs> is in sweatpants. Um, I'm wearing check basketball this shorts. Yep. Uh, those of you who've been following the show for a while know the significance of this right here. Let me see. Is that working? Oh, I've got kind of a, a reflective glare on there. But yeah, D-Rob. Delay, so I can't tell you. D-Rob signature card from her draft. Uh, Jason hooked. Steve and Logan and myself up for Christmas this year. You got to see each one of those. Those of you who've been with the show for a while, you know, the real ones know what D Rob means to this show. And that was like one of the coolest Christmas gifts. And, uh, I've been way stoked on that. And like, as soon as I got home, I like showed my wife and she's like, no way D Rob. And like, so that was a good gift. I'm going to give shouts to Jason there. Um, Hey guys, let's chat before we, uh, I, I kind of want to move on and, and talk a little bit about just some women's college basketball that we've had going on. Um, I had a chance on what day was that Saturday. So just two days ago, I took my daughter up to see just our local team here. Got to go see the Utah state Aggies. Um, that's where Steve Logan, Jason and I all met actually is it was through Utah state. So we've got a, a huge affinity for the Aggies. Um, I, I live here in cash Valley now. Um, and had a chance to go up and see the women's team. They're actually allowing some fans in. You have to sit like really far away from everybody else and wear a mask, but it was a lot of fun. And I took my daughter and we went and, uh, they got a, they got a W. Um, they were picked to, to kind of finish last, but they've got a brand new head coach, Kayla Ard, that's like absolutely crushing it right now and is, and is bringing a lot of new blood into the program. And I'm excited to see. Uh, over the next year or two where, where they go. But that was just a, a blast. And, um, it was super fun. It was really affordable. I think we paid like six bucks a ticket or something like that. And, um, to go in and, and enjoy the game. So if you, I don't know what your situation's like wherever you are. Um, if those are available, I don't know, you know, but if, if you have an opportunity, if you've got a school that's allowing some fans in, Go ahead and and go and support them. It was a blast, and my daughter was loving it the whole time. Especially with the minimal fans, like we got on the jumbotron like three times. So you know <laughs> she was all about that. Um, but uh, in that same in that same vein, let's talk. We've got new rankings for the women's college basketball. Uh, the AP Top Twenty Five came out earlier today. Um, a little bit of shifting around. Uh, the you know a few teams taking some big steps up. Um, so just real quick, just notably running through the top five, not a lot changing here. Stanford still nine and oh with, you know, the overall number one spot, 27 first place votes like Stanford's looking great. Louisville at seven and oh, uh, at number two and mm -hmm. NC state and Yukon splitting a, the exact same amount of points at 680 a piece. 
NC State's getting two first place votes and UConn's getting one. And then South Carolina rounding out the top five here at six and one. Um, you know, they started off the season number one, got knocked off and have been holding strong at number five. Really the only movement there is that UConn went from fourth to tied for third, right? It was like barely a move at all. Um, but there's been a couple other teams that had some big jumps. Um, Kentucky went from number 13 up to number 10 after a really solid week, as well as South Florida up to 18 from number 21. Um, so some big moves there, uh, a couple di- solid jumps. On the other side of the coin, a pretty significant drop for Northwestern. Dropping a game, uh, I, I believe they dropped a game earlier this week to Nebraska. Um, so, you know, maybe Jason's got some Husker love out there that, uh, that's <laughs> helping out, helping out the corn Huskers. But, um, yeah, N- Northwestern dropping seven spots, dropping from 15 all the way down to number 22. Um, so I'm just curious as far as what you guys have been able to watch so far this year. What team has caught your attention as far as like what teams right now would you consider the real deal? We're seven weeks into the season. Who do you feel like right now you're like, okay, yeah, like they're for real. They, they got a shot at making some serious waves this, this season. Uh, the way you phrase that, I, I don't want to necessarily go all in on UCLA just yet. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, Jason's coming. I mean, out. Uh, three or four. Oh, sorry, Lou. Uh, we're good. I think we had some had some loss there with Jason. I'm gonna try and get him back. Go ahead, Logan. Oh, okay. Um, I was just. I I thought you were gonna mention this as as far as teams moving spots, but um, UCLA ended a bunch of streaks that Oregon had coming into this week, um, which I thought was impressive. Since yeah. they So so the Bruins had just lost to Stanford uh, right before Christmas by like twelve. Uh, took a couple weeks off, apparently gathered themselves and then went and beat Oregon in Oregon. Um, which I just didn't see coming. I, I think UCLA is a good team, but, um, it ruins, uh, what would have been like a 22 game home winning streak for Oregon. They were looking for like their 27th straight, uh, win. So it just, Oregon is now number 11 in the country at eight and one, which I think they will climb back into the top 10 shortly. Um, but the only team with two losses in the top 10 is now UCLA, uh, because that win is being considered, um, pretty significant for them. I still don't think it, when it, when it comes down to your question, Kyle, like who's the real deal, who should be thinking about winning a championship? Uh, we're early in the season, but Stanford absolutely deserves its current top spot. I mean, a, a near unanimous number one team, um, Louisville's behind them and I hope we get to see uh, them play at some point in the tournament if we have a tournament this year I'm hoping that we do um, Stanford is really is worrisome if if you're some of these other teams I also really like Texas A&M uh, I, I want to see more from them but um, just as it, in terms of throwing a team out there that maybe you should keep an eye on that's one that we talked about at the beginning of this year uh, during our weird pie episode um, and I, I'm still interested <laughs> weird in what Texas A&M episode. does I love that they are, by the way, Texas A&M, they're the only, uh, oh no, they're not the only 10 and 0 team. NC State is also 10 and 0. Um, but they, they share double digit wins and zero losses, uh, for top 10 teams. Jason, how about you? Who's, who's catching your attention? Yeah. yeah. So I, I agree. UCLA, I think is the biggest mover of this week. And in, in my mind, uh, obviously that win over Oregon was big. Uh, but uh, to agree kind of with what Logan concluded there, uh, the one team I'm keeping my eye on is Texas A&M. Uh, they started off the season with some big wins that have gotten better over time. Uh, they beat Texas, who's now, mm-hmm. I think, 17 in the latest poll. And then they also beat DePaul, who's now number 20 in the latest poll. So they beat those teams when they were lower ranked. They were uh, high 20s or mid 20s. But um, both those teams have been improving over the year, which makes those wins look better. And just this last week, they went, I mean, it's Northwestern State, so they were, they're obviously positioned to win, but the final score was Ooh. 112 to 26. <laughs> um, That's so not a small amount. They're just going out there and a lot, a lot of their wins. Yeah, no, uh, a lot of their wins, 30 points, 28 points. Uh, they're, they're getting big quality wins. 
you know, Florida this last week, 92 to 67. So, um, they're, you know, kind of like their football team did this year. They're winning and they're winning in dominant fashion. So, uh, I, I'm really got my eye on them. Um, obviously they're, they're one of the remaining undefeateds, but they're not getting the love in the polls. I mean, they're, they're below South Carolina, Baylor and Arizona, which I get it. Um, you know, the, those teams have, well, I'd say better resumes where Texas has only played, uh, uh, a couple of, of top teams and, and they won in non convincing fashion. But, um, I, I, I think there's a good chance te- Texas A&M creeps its way up into one of those one seeds if it can continue to play the way it's playing right now. Uh, and Texas to me has one of the more intriguing players as well. Charlie Collier, uh, you know, the forward, the junior forward there, I think is mm-hmm. looking like a really, really solid WNBA prospect. Um, I think that the way she's playing right now is showing that she's got a, she's got a future probably in the league moving forward. Um, so she's probably one of the more intriguing players, um, uh, in the nation right now. I think that, uh, this junior class in particular is, is a lot of fun. Um, I, I want to bring up Louisville again. Uh, they're not getting any first place votes. I think it's probably because they've played, you know, less games. They're only at seven and oh. Um, and they don't have maybe the clout necessarily that UConn usually comes with, but Haley Van Lith as a freshman and then Dana Evans as a senior have been absolutely tearing it up in the backcourt. Um, they are a solid duo, um, that play really, really well together. And I really like what I'm seeing from each of them. You know, it's kind of like this passing of the torch from, you know, the Cardinals from, from Evans to Van Lith, in my opinion. Um, and, uh, you know, and that's, I, I know I'm focusing on those two players. There's a, they've got an entire roster of phenomenal players, but, but that team in particular, um, those two in particular have caught my attention quite a bit this season. Um, so I'm really stoked on that. Uh, so I, I like Louisville a lot and that pains me to say, cause as people know, I'm a big Kentucky Homer. And so anytime I have to give a little bit of extra love to Louisville, it like, breaks me a little bit inside but i think we'll get i think we'll we'll get by um but yeah the jack house agreed yeah louisville's defense is insane right now um i think that's what makes them so scary is they can lock down just about anybody um and if you can hold teams you know to a certain amount of points you're always going to have an opportunity to win regardless of who you're playing so I'm, I really want to see them play some of these these better teams, these top teams, um, as the season progresses, and we'll see we'll see uh, what ends up happening with um, with March as it rolls down uh, as it as it rolls this way. So Louisville's one I got I, I got my eye on um, right now. I got to give a shout out to Maryland. Um, Maryland is looking yeah. really good. They're I think the number two or number three team in the country as far as scoring goes. They can put up points in a hurry. They're seven and one right now. They've started off Big Ten play three and zero, oh, um, and just earlier tonight beat number nineteen Indiana. Um, mm-hmm. And so I, I, dude, I'm telling you, the Terps. There's something about <laughs> the Terps that really, really have my attention. I think that the Big Ten right now is just stacked top to bottom. Um, you may not have like, uh, let's see, do they have anybody even in the top? 10 nobody in the top 10 is out of the big 10 um the highest ranked big 10 team is maryland um but you got maryland you've got michigan ohio state indiana northwestern michigan state like all of those teams are top 25 teams and then let's see do 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 just outside the top 10 obviously you've got iowa still receiving top 25 votes um caitlin clark is is absolutely bonkers. Uh, she's, she's so, so good. Um, when it comes to, uh, she, when it comes to like just flat out scoring, I think she's averaging like 26 and a half points per game right now. Um, which I think is, is top five in the country. She was leading the country for yeah. a while. Um, but yeah, she's top five in the country right now as far as like points per game. Just really, really solid play there. So, um, I like a lot what I'm seeing out of that. But the Big Ten, while you may not have any of those number one, like top five teams, they just across the board are, that's just a murderer's row. Every single team that you go against in the Big Ten is, is just money right now. So, um, yeah, what do we, anything that we missed as far as, as far as covering NCAA 
ball right now? Anything uh, else you guys want to bring up? What what pie do you think Maryland is? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Turtle pie. They're the Terps, man. <laughs> I, as soon as I asked it, I was like, what a stupid question. It's <laughs> like, Kyle, Kyle, maybe he'll think of something else. And then you went right to it. I so went like, with the obvious answer. I went with the no fun answer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm still That's bitter. What, that I, I'm still bitter that I wasn't on the, uh, on the pie episode, but I think I'll get over it. Yeah. I, I can't judge you for that answer because I did a Mississippi mud pie for Mississippi, Mississippi State. State. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm blanking right now. What team, what pie did Steve say was deplorable? Was it Mississippi Mud? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he said that pie is deplorable. Mud. Oh my goodness. Uh, so good. So, oh. so good. Um, that's the quality content you come to us for. <laughs> that's what, why you're here. That's what why pie are you? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, if you're still watching right now, uh, several of you viewing right now, go ahead and smack that follow button. Uh, hit us up. We'll we'll give you a shout out on the show. Um, we're working slowly but surely toward that 50 follower mark, hoping to get that here in the next week or so so that we can start monetizing and opening up uh, for subscriptions. And those of you who are uh, already following us, uh, as soon as we hit that 50 mark, um, we're going to be able to be open for Twitch subscriptions, which you are allowed one per month through your Amazon prime. And, uh, so if for free, um, so for free, you can subscribe to us every, every single month. And that sends a couple bucks our way with at no cost to you. So, uh, spread the word, try and get us up, uh, to that 50 follower mark and then boom. Um, I think, I think a lot of our, our listener base, uh, from the podcast world and the Twitter world hasn't maybe transitioned over to Twitch and that's totally fine. I know that slowly, but surely we'll get there, but, um, yeah, we'd appreciate all the love and, and support that you guys have. Uh, Irish, Irish asking about the Notre Dame outlook. Okay. Uh, let, let's take a look at Notre Dame. Let's break them down just a little bit here. Um, Notre Dame's one of those teams that obviously has been kind of going through like some rebuilding years. Um, has had, uh, you know, struggled the last couple seasons. Um, but I mean, they're still Notre Dame. It's not like struggling for them is like, oh, they dropped out of the top 10, right? Like it's not, or the top 25, excuse me. Um, but they're still looking like a pretty solid, solid squad right now. Um, they've had, uh, you know, they had losses against Michigan, looks like Michigan, Clemson, Georgia Tech, and Ohio. The Ohio loss was just by a single point in a season opener with a weird season. I'm not stressing mm-hmm. about that one. Um, Georgia Tech is a good, good squad. I think they're a really underrated team right now. Um, obviously Michigan's solid. Um, but you know, they bounce back. They, uh, they, they won their last two games at Miami and then they came back and, and beat Georgia Tech this next time. Um, I like what the Irish are, are building. I think that, I think that what they've got right now is it is, um, I, I think they've still got a lot of pieces. I think they're a young team. Um, you know, some of their players are still like some of their main players are still, you know, underclassmen. And then, you know, even they've got, but they've got some solid recruits coming in. Um, Olivia Miles and Sonia, uh, Citron that are both on their way to the Irish for this next year, this next season. The Irish are going to be fine. The Irish really are going to be fine. I think that they're going to be maybe another year away from, from being, you know, a top 15, top 10 team, but don't expect them to be down for long because, because Irish have a really solid tradition, a really solid history. And oh, any of your thoughts, you guys on, on the Irish? Obviously it's, it's a proud school. We got Jewel Lloyd. We've got Sky Dig. We've got a lot of big name mm-hmm. players in the WNBA that, um, that come out of Notre Dame. Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, I agree with everything you said, Kyle. I think this isn't going to be their year. Uh, looking ahead at their February, they have to play Louisville twice in February. Yeah. They've got to play in NC State, Syracuse. I think they're going to have a rough go at the end. I think they're going to have a really good mid-stretch through January. Um, I see them finishing probably either towards 25 or maybe outside of the top 25. Mm. I think that's kind of where they settle this year. Uh, but I agree with you. Uh, they're in that process of bringing in young talent. I think, you know, maybe two, three years from now, we talk about them being competitive again, uh, in terms of like going, you know, to, to compete for the championship. Um, it's just not their year, but 
uh, you know, I, I would just encourage Irish fans to be patient and, uh, and wait for the process to happen because you lost a lot of really great talent over the last couple drafts, uh, especially what was it two years ago? I think like half the draft was from Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, and so like, it, it's one of those things that takes time to, to get the new talent in, get them functioning as a team. Uh, this isn't the year I see them going deep into the, into the March madness, assuming we have that, uh, all fingers crossed because I want that really <laughs> bad in my life. Um, but yeah, so it, it's one of those things that, uh, uh, I, I just, I don't see it this year. I, I think maybe they finish top 25, but probably not. Um, but I, I don't, I don't think they'll be out for long. Any thoughts, uh, Logan? Uh, in, in an effort to be contrarian, um, I could <laughs> see them. It's really top 25 is, is tough because being in a conference with NC state and Louisville, um, they're, they're not, they're not in that echelon this year, but I could see them battling their way up to be with, you know, Florida state and Syracuse, um, and, and even see some of those other teams ahead of them fade. Um, I'm really, I, I'm encouraged by what I've seen from them recently. They shoot the ball well. Um, I, you know, I, I remember catching glimpses of, of stuff on Twitter about their game against Georgia Tech, um, which seemed like it was a really close fight the whole way. And being able to pull out a win in close games against good opponents is a really good attribute to have. Um, sure. if you look, if you look at the box score of that game, it's pretty telling that Notre Dame isn't particularly interested in rebounding the basketball, <laughs> um, which, which I do think hurts them against, you know, really elite teams. Uh, but if you can shoot the ball and you can, you can have nights where you go 50% from three, uh, you can, you can hold your own. Like they, I, I, they won't be a popular pick to beat Louisville, but on their best night and, and maybe Louisville putting up a lackluster performance, I could see anything happening. So. They do have a really rough uh, schedule ahead. Uh, I think if if I was to bet uh, Notre Dame finishing top 25 or out of the top 25, I would put my money on they finish just outside of it. Mm. Um, but for a, a program that's used to having some stars and uh, putting out good performances and not really being afraid of anybody, uh, I think this team's recent performances late in games give give a lot of reason to be hopeful that maybe they can turn some heads this season against those better teams. Absolutely. I mean, you've got some really solid pieces. You know, you've got Maddie Westbeld and, uh, you know, Destiny Walker. I, I'm a huge fan of Sam Brunel. Um, she's been someone who's, I think, been on our radar ever since she was in high school as far as, you know, her involvement with USA basketball and whatnot. I think that she's got a bright future. Um, the Irish have a lot of really good pieces and they've got a good incoming class. I, I think that, uh, I, I, I think I'm hoping, I guess I, I'm, I'm more hoping that, that we see a lot more from, uh, the Notre Dame moving forward. I think they're a lot of fun, you know, uh, you know, after Goomba Wale's big performance in, in the final four, um, you know, they've kind of been just gone for, yeah. for the last couple of seasons. And so I think they'll bounce back for sure. But I agree, Logan, like they're not in an easy position where they can just like accumulate a bunch of wins. Like it's going to, it's a grind. It's a grind for, um, for Notre Dame and where they're, where they're at and who they play. Um, I got another question from the Jag house thoughts on Duke ending their season, the women's team at Duke ending their season. Uh, either of you want to hop on that immediately? Uh, um, oh, go for it, Logan. I mean, my insight was not deep. It's just that it totally sucks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we didn't really get to see them this year. I mean, they, they played a couple, you know, lower level teams and then they lost pretty big to Louisville. Um, but they had some games coming up that would have been pretty telling. Um, I far be it from me to tell a team what's best for their program. Um, but I, I do think it, it feels a little premature. Um, we, we had a lot of sports cancel and then end up playing in the fall, most notably in like the college football realm. Uh, everyone was playing it safe and they were saying like, we don't want to risk it. And then when, when they kind of figured out how to do it as safely as they could, a lot of, a lot of conferences walked it back and said like, well, we're going to play conference only and we're going to take precautions, but we're still going to have the, the games. And it feels like that, that could have been on the table. Uh, and so it's, it's disappointing. Uh, but at the same time, if they're doing, if the team is on board with it, if the players in the locker room are saying this is what's best for the program, I've got nothing bad to say about it. But I am disappointed um, because it's it's unique. Not a lot of other teams have called the season. 
seems like it's going to move forward both with men's and women's. I think we will have some sort of bubble March Madness this year. It might not be a full field of 60, uh, 64, 62, 64, mm-hmm. 68. Um, they always do the weird day one play in games that don't know how many it is yeah. anymore. Um, but oh, yeah, ultimately I'm, I'm left wanting them to, I wish they would look at that decision and say, did we really need to do this? Uh, because it seems like, uh, they're, you know, basketball is kind of churning forward without them. But again, if the players in the, in the locker room made the decision, it's their team. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Jason, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, I, they were hard to get a read on this year. They, they played, I think it was four games. They beat who they were supposed to beat. They lost who they're supposed to lose to, but the loss was bad. I mean, I'm going through the box score right now. Uh, one for 16 from three. Oof. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, 57% from the free throw line. I mean, just not the type of numbers you want to be putting up in a, in, in a game, especially a big game like that. Uh, but I didn't get to see it. So I don't know what was going on. I don't know if they had players sitting out at that point or not. Um, so I, I'm just not sure. It, I guess my answer is I don't know as far as Duke's future because I don't really know where they're at right now. Like, I, mm-hmm. the, the games that they should have won weren't super telling because I think they would have won those games if they were average or great. Um, sorry. Something just started playing audio on my computer, so now I'm getting feedback. All right. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Hopefully you guys didn't have to hear that. Um, I, I don't think you would have because it's just did. in my headphones. But, uh, anyways, um, it, it's hard because they beat the teams they were supposed to beat, but they would have done that if they were an average team or a great team. And then they lost, and that loss was really bad, but one bad loss does not, you know, necessarily define them. So, um, I don't really know. Um, I, I think, you guys might be more in tune as to what they've got going on with recruiting and, and developing. So um, I just, I haven't been able to follow them that closely. I know Logan, you're kind of a, a big Duke fan after setting up some interviews last year. So yeah. I, I don't know if you guys have more insight oh, yeah, dude, as far as Haley, that what Haley the future Gorecki holds. interview was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, and also I, I've got Dukies in my, in my family. My older brother's a, a big Duke guy. So we, we do have a side on this. Well, we've got Kara Larson, the new head coach this year too. So, I mean, so that, that is worth like addressing. <laughs> I, I heard Jason say a lot of like, well, we don't really know. And part of that problem is on Duke's behalf because they haven't said a word about it. Yeah. Like they, yeah. They, they started their season, canceled it after four games, and we haven't heard from the athletic director. We haven't heard any players say anything. It's, it's kind of interesting that a first year head coach is kind of at the helm here and we haven't heard anything from her. Makes me feel like maybe it wasn't her decision. Uh, that's, that's mm, me kind of interesting. That's, yeah. that's me reading between lines that might not even be there, but <laughs> it, you know, if I was her, I don't know if that would have been, I, I think pretty much every coach in every sport wants to play if given the option. Uh, mm-hmm. and the fact that we haven't heard her publicly say like, this is our thought process and why we did it makes me feel like it, you know, I don't know if it was necessarily you a popular want decision. An explanation, right? I, I, yeah, really. Uh, and I, I think it's, I think it's weird. You know, w- college basketball, both men's and women's, is not as tight-lipped usually as football. It's a little bit more transparent. Right. And this is one of those occasions where it feels like they're, if they're not being transparent, it, it feels like there has to be a reason. Otherwise, why not just come clean and say, like, here's this, our this is why. Here's our decision. So, yeah. you know, I don't want to put stuff in the universe that's not there. Uh, but I, it's expected in situations like this that some statement is made uh, to to you know, the media or via the, the athletic department's PR. Uh, and we, we really, the, the story that if you go to the Duke women's page on ESPN, the story is that there is no story that they haven't said anything about it. Yeah. It's just, we're not, we're not playing. That's it. Yeah. I would like to know more. Um, yeah. I wish we could get a little bit better insight as to why uh, they're ending the season. But again, in a, in a year and in a season like this one, I don't have like, I don't blame anyone for making decisions that if they felt like it's best as far as for their team health, you know, and who knows, maybe several of their players have a lot of close family members that are, you know, high risk, you know, I I don't know who's to say, you know, what, what it is and what it isn't, but it is unfortunate. I think they're a fun team. Um, I think a lot of the media that was coming because of Kara Lawson and, and everything that she was saying, everything that she was doing, you know, she had some really cool, like, pre-practice speeches, pre-game speeches that were a ton of fun to watch and a ton of fun to listen to. And so missing out on those the rest of the season will be a little bit yeah. of a bummer. But on on the other end of the spectrum, the the men's Blue Devils team has been trying to play this season and it's 
it's been kind of a mess. Yeah. Um, they've they've had mm-hmm. plenty. They've had three canceled games, three postponed games. Um, Coach K is in quarantine. Uh, it's you know, it's not looking like the worst decision in the world. I, I know I'm kind of playing both sides here, but um, it's it's not like the men's team has come out you know playing their games and just had no problems and making the the women's team look foolish. It really has been like these are your two options: either you don't play or your season is really rocky. Uh, right. And it has not been it has not been easy going for for that men's team. I yeah. agree. Um, just I'm I'm just going through the roster because now that it's been exposed that I don't have a good understanding of Duke's roster, um, I'm I'm trying to rectify that. Um, the one thing we can look forward to is four of their five starters from this year are going to be coming back. Uh, Jade Williams is a senior, so I, I don't think we expect to see her again. Uh, but behind her is uh, I'm going to butcher this, so I apologize. Uchenna Nwaki. Nwoke, mm-hmm. something like that. Uh, six, six, uh, center coming in, uh, to, to take that spot. So, um, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't seen her play. Um, she played in the games these years, but uh, this year, but, uh, didn't get a ton of minutes. So, uh, might be interesting to see. I mean, you're bringing back your four starters. Obviously, they're not getting a lot of reps this year, but hopefully they're getting a lot of practice in. Um, and then if you can plug in, uh, Nwoki at six, six, I mean, that could be, uh, you know, that could, that could be a, a dominant team. So, um, Definitely some promise. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're going to have another go at this with essentially the same unit. So, um, I'm amped for, I don't know. Maybe I'm just like thinking positively and like looking forward and not, and appreciating as much what's happening right now, but I'm just ready. I'm, I'm amped about a vaccine and about hopefully a <laughs> slow return to normal. I have like this small outside sliver of hope that like fans will be allowed at WNBA games this season. Like mm-hmm. I would oh. love that instead of having a bubble, like I'm just really wanting that. And so as you're talking about this and about their ending this season, like all I could think of was like daydreaming. Like, okay. Like, am I going to get to see a game this year? Am I going to be able to, you know, head out to Chicago <laughs> yeah. for a game or down to LA for a game or something like that? So, you know, we've, we've yeah. been to a few different WNBA venues. And, uh, you know, Jason, now you live down near in the Dallas area. So yeah. you being able to hit a, a wings game would be, would be really sweet. So I think we got to capitalize on these opportunities right now. And so I'm praying, you know, hoping against hope that we have, you know, at minimum some limited fans in attendance at these games so yeah. that we can, we can hit them up. Yeah. Well, and I mean, and it's, it's, just like with everything else, it's going to be regional. I mean, you saw that with college football this year, the Pac-12 playing with no fans. Right. Uh, you know, whereas, you, you know, some of the teams in the SEC and stuff had limited fans. Um, you know, I'm here in Dallas. Uh, you know, the, there's other professional sports going on that have limited attendance. So assuming they followed that same regional model, uh, we should have some form of that. And I mean, I know my mom has some health conditions that put her up higher on the list for the vaccine. And she just got contacted by her doctor that she should be getting the vaccine in the next week. So, I mean, Sweet. it's coming. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's coming. It's, so it's just coming out slower than we anticipated. Right. Yeah. yeah like but, it's, it's available, but, I mean, but we just haven't got it out as quickly as I've been wanting it. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll wear a mask. I'll wear a hazmat suit. Just let me watch basketball. That's, that's yeah, exactly. All I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I almost wonder, like, it's been so long since any of us were able to go to like a, like a game or a concert or anything with loud, like excited, crowded people. Uh, like the first game we go to is going to feel like a playoff atmosphere. Oh, oh yeah, for like sure. They're going to let people in and everyone's going to be like, I haven't been in a packed house for over a year. Like, I forgot what this even sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Think about the players too. Yeah. Yeah. Like the players You've are going to have to face that. Yeah. You've been seeing some weird stuff in the NBA this season with, uh, now that they're not in a bubble and they're, mm-hmm. they're playing the season, but they're playing in home gyms without fans. Teams are losing by 40 every night. Yeah. And, and I mm-hmm. think it's cause you don't have like either you're, you're at home and you don't have that boost to, to stick close and, and stay in the game. You just kind of mentally, like it's just a, a harder weight to bear. Or if you're an opposing gym, uh, it's, you know, it's been wild. I, I haven't seen so many like drastic blowouts in the NBA. I don't think ever like in such a, in such quick succession. And it's like the Clippers lose by 50 and then they win by 40. It's not just like some teams suck. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's so weird. Um, and I, you know, it, I know there's a lot of numbers behind like home field advantage and home court advantage and how much it matters, but like 
Mm-hmm. Sure, it sure seems to matter. Yeah. <laughs> it sure seems to matter somewhat. Well, so. and I, I think that, you know, especially as somebody who plays a lot in the statistics, um, in the past, I've, I was kind of the, the guy who ran Whoopi, the Excel spreadsheet that tried to predict basketball games. So I just haven't had time with schooling and stuff to, to keep up on. But, um, as much as I love to get into the stats, people forget that sports is mostly emotional in my mind. Like sure. the stats are important. And obviously, like shooting percentage, those things matter. But there's an emotional component. I mean, y- there's no statistic for Sue Bird with a mask on, you mm-hmm. know, and, and that emotional aspect of the game, uh, it really interacts with the fans in a way that, you know, makes the fans a part of the game. I mean, there's a reason that there's, you know, sixth woman of the year or like, you know, uh, at, uh, Texas A&M, it's the 12th man, you know, the, the, the fans are, you know, from the football game and, there's a reason that we view the crowd as being part of the game, and that's because they are. In that emotional context, the fans are a part of the game. And so I'm excited to have that back, um, you know, to yeah. to be able to do that. So Absolutely. Hey, uh, I want to give a quick shout-out, or not a shout-out, but just a, a heads-up for where you really, where your attention needs to be this upcoming week with some big NCAA women's games coming up. Um, yeah. Thursday, the seventh. All right, Thursday the seventh. We've got uh, let's see, one, two, three, three games that are that pit top twenty-five teams against each other. Two of those games are top ten teams against each other. Uh, we've got Maryland, who I gave a shout out to earlier, is going to be. Um, Heading out and facing number 23, Michigan State. Uh, that's going to be at 3 p.m. Mountain Time. So, fi- uh, let's see, 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time there. Um, as well as uh, number 10, Kentucky against number 8, Texas A&M down in College Station. That's going to be at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and then... So, I mean, that's, that's number 10 versus number eight. That would be the headliner game, you'd think, right? Wrong. Yukon, Baylor. And if you know anything about these two teams, number three, Yukon at number six, Baylor, uh, their combined record right now is 14 and one with Baylor with having the lone loss. However, Baylor and Yukon, the last several seasons has been absolutely wild some of the best basketball that you'll see in any uh any college game comes from the huskies and the bears uh facing off so those three games in particular you got to keep your eye on um so uconn and baylor is going to be on espn kentucky texas a&m on sec network and then uh maryland and michigan state is on the big 10 network so all of them are available um, you know, I, th- I think that at least two of the three, I believe are on, um, yeah, two of the three will, and maybe all three of them will be on at least like YouTube TV. Um, so would be a good, would be a good opportunity for you to use one of those, uh, free trial runs that YouTube TV allows you to have a seven day trial. <laughs> I, w- I might use it this Thursday if, if you're not doing anything. So, uh, that's a must see television right there. Those three games. So, Hopefully we'll be live tweeting some of those, uh, some of those games and some of those results as they come in. Um, but yeah. Um, Logan, Jason, anything else, uh, anything else that we have for everybody before we, before we close out? Uh, who wants to want to give a quick rundown as far as our merch, as far as our, uh, uh, our sponsor of today's stream and, uh, and where they can find us on, uh, on all of our socials. Yeah, it's, I, I don't think I've given a rundown in a minute, so I'll, I'll give it a shot. Let's do it. Uh, follow us on social media, Facebook and Twitter at WNBA Nation Pod. No underscore, despite what I usually say. <laughs> uh, if, if you want to support the show, one of the ways you can do that is merch, uh, WNBA Nation dot store envy dot com. The store envy only has one E, so the, the store and the envy kind of merge together. Uh, you can find links to that anywhere that you're finding this. Uh, you can find links to that on Twitch. You can find links to that on YouTube. Uh, wherever you're enjoying this content, you're going to find a link to that as well. Uh, you can also check out our YouTube. Uh, it's youtube.com slash C for channel C, uh, slash, uh, WNBA nation. So you can go over there. Um, all of our streams end up over there after I do a little bit of mild editing to them. So you can, <laughs> you can catch the streams if you miss it. Um, 
Yeah, and other than that, uh, check out our sister shows, uh, NWSL Nation. You can go ahead and search for that on all of your favorite pod grabbers. Uh, you can follow them at NWSL Nation Pod, uh, as well as NWHL Nation. They're not gonna, sh- we're not gonna show up on your uh, search in your podcast yet because the the channel is not officially live. Uh, but you can find us over on Twitter, NWHL Nation Pod. So uh, go check us out over there. Uh, did I miss anything? Oh yeah, uh, Knowable. Today's uh, episode and most of our episodes for the last few weeks have been brought to you by Knowable. Uh, Knowable is a way for you to be able to learn new skills. Uh, it has over 200 courses. They're all audio. So these are things you can do while you're doing the dishes, going to the gym, driving the car. Uh, but they're more than just good podcasts. It's, it's uh, audio courses that are matched with workbooks that take you step by step through learning these new skills. Uh, currently, I've been going through the How to Speak with Confidence one. Um, I know you guys have some other ones. I know Chris Paul is about to release his going, uh, going plant based in, in terms of his diet and how that affected his athleticism. So there's lots of great things. So check that out. Noble.fyi. If you go over there, uh, and you check out the courses they have, you're, you know, you can look through their catalog. If you decide it's for you, make sure you use code WNBA nation at checkout. Uh, that does two things that gives you a 20% discount on your annual membership. And it also gives us. Uh, the knowledge that you guys came from us and it gives us a little bit of a kickback, help support the show. So uh, any of those things help support us. Uh, and at the very, very least, make sure you're following us on social media and interacting with us there because we love talking to you guys. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the rundown as far as I remember it. Solid. Love it, Jason. I uh, I got to give a quick another just pitch to, to Knowable. I finished. Uh, I, I listen. I'm not even planning on this, but I, I finished the course on launching a startup. Um it's super, super like informative and not just if you're planning on launching a startup. It's just as far as how businesses run, how, how companies work and how you can fit better within the company that you are currently employed in. Um, it gave me a different perspective of, you know, what are founders like and what are managers looking at? And it was really great. Uh, a really great, um, course to take. Um, I actually just recently started just in the last couple of days about starting a podcast, which is something that we've been doing for years now. <laughs> and so what I want to do is I want to go back and listen to it and see, okay, what have we missed? What do we need? What adjustments can we make, you know, five, six, seven, eight years into, uh, into experience with podcasting, um, and be able to, uh, have an opportunity to just get that much better. So I'm, I'm going through that one right now. I figure that's pretty fitting considering what we do here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really solid. Um, make sure that you use coupon co- coupon code WNBA nation, get you 20, 20% off right now. It's only 50 bucks for a full annual membership. Um, and it's unlimited courses as soon as, uh, you do that. And then 20% off of that, you know, it, that drops it down to a really, really manageable, uh, let's see, what is that? 40 bucks. Uh, yeah, yeah, 40 bucks. <laughs> I'm math is hard right now. Um, 40 bucks, you know, for a, an entire year to go through 200 different expert audio like courses. It's really, really solid, guys. Trust us. Um, but yeah, uh, anything else that you want to add on top of that, Logan? No, nah, man, you guys crushed it. Noble is really cool. Uh, I, there's a couple books that I've read that, uh, I've, I've actually taken the time to listen to the Noble. Uh, like audio series on them because they're usually they're called book shots and they're just really quick. And even though they're things I've read in the past, they're like they're they're more than just refreshers. Like they add on to kind of the lessons learned in in some of those. Uh, so I I've had Jen Cicero's "You Are a Badass" as my my bathroom reading for the past year. Um, and there's a noble course on that that I instantly was like, ah, I want to see what they have to say about this book. <laughs> so pretty much any interest you can possibly have, you you will scroll like the first page of Knowable and find something that you're into. Um, so definitely check that out. That's all I got. Good show, everybody. Love it. Well, guys, make sure that you are here on Wednesday. We're going to be recording again on Wednesday. We've got a special episode coming in. Um, but yeah, for, uh, for WNBA Nation, I'm Kyle Haywood. I'm Jason Snow. I'm Logan Jones. And we got you next time.